nice to have you on our program. Uh, we are talking about India's 50 years of independence, 50 साल इंडिया की इंडिपेंडेंस के हैं। उसमें आपके ख्याल से इंडिया की जो सिग्निफिकेंट अचीवमेंट्स जो हुई हैं, वो क्या क्या हैं? See, on every field of science and technology, uh, there have been uh, significant achievements, whether you take uh, agriculture and medicine or areas of high technology like atomic energy, space and uh, defense uh, research. But uh, I think the Green Revolution was one of our most remarkable achievements. Uh, otherwise, uh, it would have been very difficult for India to preserve its uh, political and economic uh, freedom and uh, considering the state of the agriculture at the time of independence and the uh, frequent famines that we used to have before to today's uh, situation uh, where we are self-sufficient in food I think is a remarkable achievement. Then there have been in drugs and pharmaceutical industry there have been very good uh, I think significant achievements or you take my own area of atomic energy. Uh, where internationally we are now considered uh, a developed rather than as a developing country. So, as I said, uh, I would say across the board uh, there have been significant achievements, though I would say that in uh, some areas our achievements have not been uh, commensurate with our talents. Now, uh, when you are talking about these achievements that India has made, how would you do it in context with the world growth or how are we placed, would you say? See, in my own area of atomic energy, we are among the half a dozen countries in the world uh, which has a comprehensive capability in the nuclear uh, uh, fuel cycle. Um, other areas have to be judged, uh, I think, uh, taking one each area uh, separately because you have got basic research, you have got applied research, you have got technology development and slowly we are catching up in many of these areas. And uh, in basic research, we have had uh, very significant uh, achievements in uh, some areas of uh, chemistry and uh, physics and material science and engineering and uh, similarly in applied uh, research. But there are tremendous opportunities in the future also. So, what you, would you say the contribution of science and technology towards nation building? See, in my opinion, and uh, this was the opinion even of Jawaharlal Nehru in the earlier days, uh, that there will be no technological, no development of uh, India without uh, developments in uh, science and uh, technology. Uh, because if you want to have uh, the, um, shall I say, to take, get the benefits of the latest advances in science and technology, uh, you must be uh, on par um, with what is happening around the world. And the other side of course is national development and national uh, security are related. They are two sides of the same coin. You must have national security uh, if uh, national development has to take place peacefully and national development uh, feeds uh, the sinews of uh, uh, security. So, our research has to encompass all these areas and um, uh, our recent uh, uh, developments in the areas of nuclear and uh, missile research areas are examples. So, India is progressing uh, on all fronts and it is absolutely essential. Technology development is absolutely essential if India has to grow and uh, take its place in the committee of uh, nations. So, India has shown this drive to be self-sufficient in the field of science and technology. There is this urge for India to keep on far and to get on far. How important is that? See, uh, there was a time uh, when uh, I was young, I think, much younger, uh, where um, self-sufficiency was the motto. Everyone, everything we wanted to do ourselves and uh, if you felt very proud if you did it for the first time. That stage of Indian science and development is over. We have advanced uh, very far now and international cooperation is very essential. Uh, so, self-reliance in fact today I define not as uh, self-sufficiency per se, but uh, as providing you immunity against technology denial. You do not have to do everything yourself, uh, but if something is denied to you, you must have the capability to, 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 to uh, uh, do it, so that no kind of technological sanction can hurt. 
and uh, today I think uh, India is uh, and the industrial infrastructure in this country and the scientific institutions uh, that we have in the mission oriented agencies, the CSIR, the universities, the IITs, all, all these uh, provide you the uh, mechanism and uh, sign you to, uh, to take up these kind of challenges whenever they are posed. So I did not really say we are, nobody is ever self-sufficient really, if you uh, look at it, because science and technology keep growing and uh, you have to uh, follow that. But any point of time you can say that, okay, we can uh, uh, do all this by ourselves. And in many areas uh, we have achieved that, but there are other areas in which we lag behind the developed countries. After all, uh, uh, if you look at our uh, per capita gross national product or if you look at the per capita electricity consumption, it is much lower than that in uh, developed countries. So they are parameters which hinder our growth even in science and technology. But our greatest uh, advantage is the human resource. I think um, person to person uh, uh, the Indian is uh, among the most talented in the world and that is also true of our young scientists and that is there, uh, therein lies our hope. So there was one time when people were saying about brain drain from India, is it still there you think? Of course certain percentage of uh, people uh, from our advanced institutions, educational institutions do go abroad but it's also a fact that a large number of us uh, have stayed behind and as India grows and begins to develop uh, more and more Indians, young Indians would uh, like to stay back in this country and also I think uh, more and more Indians uh, would like to come back here and work who are already abroad. Now uh, in your own field, there is this vision behind you know, being self-sufficient in nuclear power, that is one area where India is, has got this vision. Can you tell us a little about this nuclear power? See, the uh, kind of reactors we build are what we call pressurized heavy water reactors. And in this area we are, um, we means including not just the Department of Atomic Energy, but all the several hundred companies which back us, uh, we are self-sufficient, totally indigenous. And we have now designed a 500 megawatt electrical uh, pressurized heavy water reactor. Uh, and the two units of which we are going to start immediately after the monsoon. So that's our mainstay, first stage of our program. Then we'll use uh, the plutonium that comes out of these reactors into fast breeder reactors. Because if we can do that, the same amount of uranium can give you several tens of times more electrical power by recycling the plutonium that you produce there. Then the third stage on which, in which you have made uh, some beginnings is the utilization of thorium. Thorium by itself is not a fissile material, but uh, if um, you put it in a reactor, it gets in converted into a fissile isotope of uranium, uranium-233. So third stage, we would like to go into the uranium-233 thorium cycle. And uh, if we are able to do all this the total amount of energy that you can draw from our uh, uh, nuclear uh, fuel resources is three to five times the total amount of coal that is available in the country. And uh, as I see, as I look into the future and I see our coal reserves going down and hydroelectric projects beginning to a little more difficult to build because of displacement of people and possible disturbance to ecology and the this question of global warming, carbon dioxide, emissions, greenhouse uh, gases and all that. I see nuclear energy as an uh, inevitable option to satisfy the future energy needs of this country. And in the short term, say if I, our plan is to go to something like 20,000 megawatt by the year 2020, for which uh, we are uh, technically equipped, uh, but the only thing is we should be able to generate uh, necessary resources for this. Because as I said, per capita electricity consumption is one of the most important measures of development. And in my opinion, this must increase uh, by a factor of between 8 and 10. 
uh, eight to ten times if the poorest among us have to have a reasonable quality of life. So finally, Dr. Chidambaram, today at this stage, uh, how proud are you to be an Indian after all the achievements that you've had or not had? <laughs> You see, the, one of my friends has given me a quotation of Indira Gandhi, uh, which says that, how can you be an Indian and still not feel proud? <laughs> so I'm most proud to be an Indian, and that's why my entire career has been in India. And this is a feeling shared by so, so many of my colleagues, because all of us would like to go abroad and uh, meet uh, uh, our peers, other scientists. Uh, but when we come back, we are very happy. See, in uh, one to one, in terms of scientific ability, uh, most of our colleagues would be on par. But uh, the question only is in terms of the facilities uh, that they have access to, and the facilities that we have, we are able to uh, build in India because of the sheer cost. It's more the cost than uh, the technological uh, uh, capability to to build it. There we lack, we are behind. But then, one on the other hand, you must remember that C. V. Raman did his research uh, uh, with very little money, and at a time when there was uh, practically no um, kind of a scientific tradition of this type, of the Western style type. Of course, we have had uh, great Indian scientists even in ancient times. And so, but Raman could do that. So, people who complain of lack of facilities and in, in India, uh, it only means they are choosing perhaps the uh, not the right kind of problems. So, there are tremendous possibilities within this country and uh, the young people must really create their own opportunities. Finally, what do you say on, on this occasion of 50 years of this thing? How, how do you feel and how does it, you know, anything that you would like to say? See, I feel India is on to the path of rapid development now. And uh, India is a big country, though sometimes we tend to forget uh, this, I think, basic uh, fundamental uh, fact. And if you take this into account, look at our people, look at our resources, look at the possibilities, uh, I see, I envision a very, very bright future for this uh, country.